Back in September, I talked about the uh, 12 volt high power cable found on 40 series graphics cards to be a little bit of a concern, not of my own, but just because of what people are already saying in the industry. It's funny because it ruffled a bunch of feathers. It ruffled some feathers with some engineers. It ruffled Nvidia's feathers quite a bit. And then this popped up on Reddit. This picture of this burned connector right here. And of course I have a ton of emails in my inbox of people saying, you were right, you were right. And first of all, I wasn't right. All I was doing was putting out information that was being sent to me by people in the know behind the scenes before the 40 series launched saying this connector is a problem. When I put that video out, Brandon Bell had this to say. The very first sentence in this email says, I just saw the video you posted and I think you're worrying about issues that don't exist. He goes on to say, we have thoroughly tested our power adapters and expect no issues. And potential customers who are concerned can use the RTX 40 series connector solution with confidence. Ends such email by saying, there's nothing to worry or panic about. It all just works, man. Today's video is brought to you by the JC Sense merch store. We got t-shirts and gaming mats and mugs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go buy our stuff, we don't have to put other ads here and other annoying crap. So go buy our stuff. So if you don't follow Reddit or whatever, um, a user by the name of uh, Reggie GA Kill, got kill or whatever, I, I don't know. He has a 4090. He has a 12 volt power adapter, which has the four adapt uh, pigtails coming off. I don't have one handy. You'd think I would, because I have the 4090 right here. And he's had it in his system, and he said he was actually gaming, and then started smelling and seeing smoke from his graphics card. And from the connector, it started to melt. So he put, he put up a couple of pictures here of the, both the GPU connector itself and then the adapter connector. Uh, and what you can see right here is this is a heat-related issue. This is, this, these pins clearly got hot. Now remember, the 12-pin connector here is designed up to a spec of 600 watts. In fact, what I think you should also do at the end of this video is go and watch Buildzoid's video. He actually does a really good piece about NVIDIA's typical overcomplication of design. Uh, and yes, we know NVIDIA did not develop this plug. It was actually a collaborative effort between Intel and PCI SIG. Remember, PCI SIG is the one that comes up with the standard for PCI cables. And Intel really pushed it, and apparently NVIDIA really also pushed it and adapted it and wanted to solve a non-issue of having these bigger power connectors, which we've seen for over a decade, to this itty bitty little tiny one, which apparently solves a problem of space that wasn't even an issue, uh, to make it nice and tidy. But the problem is now you've got a lot of amps traveling through very tiny pins. And as you can see in this particular use case here, this graphics card gave up the magic smoke, at least, some sort of smoke, the card still works. Now I wanna reiterate some things here. My concern initially, I didn't even have the cards in hand when I made that video yet. I, like I said, I had information that people were writing me saying, hey, this is a problem. In fact, let's not forget, Nvidia even posted an email to PCI SIG themselves about concerns of melting connectors, both at the GPU side and the power supply side. Now we don't have any ATX 3.0 PSUs in hand yet, and we will obviously be testing it. But you have to remember, if you're currently using any 12 volt high power connector that connects to an ATX 2.0 power supply, it is like half smart. And we've already showed you how depending on which connectors and sense wires are plugged in on the four sideband connectors, you'll get a different power limit available to your card. So it's one of those things where I have no idea if this user was overclocking his card. I have no idea if he didn't just max the power slider. We have no idea. However, I can tell you none of the power supplies or the graphics cards that we've looked at yet exceed the 600 watt available power limit. Now this connector, if designed and spec'd properly, should be able to run 600 watts all day long, every day, because it's within the spec. It should be able to handle that. But we're starting to see more people now, uh, and this is the, not the first person. This is actually the first one that's kind of gone viral on Reddit that's having a problem with their connector. But initially people were like, well, what would you do with your connector? Did you bend it real tight? Because we've already shown that every single 4090 on the market, if you put it in your, your case horizontal, as a standard install, not a vertical mount, you've got to put a hell of a bend on the connector. Now remember, NVIDIA's connector has a, uh, a heat shrink slash fabric tape around it. And the reason that tape is there is not just to give some strength to where those connectors and those pins 
pin into the plug itself, it's because of the fact that as Cable Mod has shown on their own website, and I highly recommend you look at this, that there has to be 35 millimeters of relief. Now what that means is there needs to be a 35 millimeters out from the plug before the bend starts. And that's to keep anything from happening and torquing inside the connector that could cause either a weak connection or some sort of a short. I don't think it has to do with the short, I think it just has to do with the weak connection. For instance, if you've got a male connector that has to then uh, slot into a female pin on the other side, and it's in there seated properly, you have good contact. If you bend it and you pull it out slightly, because you, as you bend it, it can pull the pins out. Remember, the cable doesn't get longer. It has to make that bend, and the uh, top side cables have a farther radius to make, which means they're gonna pull out on the top. So if you bend it too tight, you can actually pull those pins back in the connector, and now instead of having a nice seated pin, pulls back, and you don't have as good of a contact. So now you have a lot of wattage going through a lesser contact area of transfer from one pin to the other. That's what I believe is happening here, because even though this particular card was mounted vertical, and here's a photo of what his setup looks like, and you can see the plug is coming kind of straight up, although it does look like it's canted to the side slightly. Cable Mod also showed you cannot bend it sideways. You cannot bend it either way flippy floppy unless you have 35 millimeters of length before the bend, which by the way, just about no case on the market is gonna allow for 35 millimeters of relief before the bend. Even the giant Helios case that we were using to test None of those will allow for it because even the 4090 was not able to clear with that level of relief. And it has the like lowest height of any of the custom cards. All the custom cards have an even higher mount, even by a few millimeters. So no card is gonna conform to that without being vertically mounted. I have a sneaky suspicion at some point, this user might've bent his cable. Maybe he tried to mount it horizontally. It didn't work, okay? Mounted it vertical then and it worked because Look at the way only the pins closest to the PCB are burned. And that goes along with that theory of what I said. If the card is mounted horizontally like this, and only the top pins are bent, burnt, if he had bent it down and pulled those pins out and pulled those pins back in their mount before mounting it vertical, he might have an issue now where the pins are not making a great contact like I said. This to me, Looks like it was not a current issue. It looks to me like it was a contact issue with those pins. Because if it was a current issue, I would have expected to see pretty much all of them burnt. Because current, remember, travels both ways, both power and ground. So I would expect to see there be more burned pins there and more burned plastic. This is just burned plastic, by the way. The pins still work. It still works, the card works. There's no failure anywhere in terms of solder joints or anything like that. So this appears to be an issue of uh, contact. At least that's my guess. And without talking to him, without having the card in hand, it's not even something I want to try to recreate because let's face it, these are expensive cards and I really don't want to sacrifice one to science here. I, I would hope that whatever manufacturer this card is, I'm not sure what card this was actually, but do you notice how when the cable's coming up right now, it's got this sideways bend. If I go back to the email from Brandon, we were talking about the 30 cycle thing and that was that was kind of like the, the the gist of the email with NVIDIA was like, hey, the 30 cycle thing has been around since Molex. Okay, Molex all the way through PCI Express as we know it now, now to the 12 pin connector. Um, the 30 cycles has always been the spec. So they kind of really got stuck on that. But the fact that, um, you know, I was basically told like the whole melting thing isn't a concern, it's not a problem, don't worry about it, it just works. That's not aging too well, man. And that was on, uh, what was the date on that? September 23rd. Hey, one month and one day later, guess what? So the other thing is, let's talk about Johnny Guru for a second here. Johnny Guru is another guy that kind of went off the rails at Gamers Nexus and us, but I let that be water under the bridge. Um, talking about how you know, this is all bullshit and nobody knows what they're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. What I think is funny is this particular quote, and I believe this is from his own Discord. A user asks, I wonder how many power supply, how many power supplies Corsair lost to prototype RTX 4090 and 4090 Ti's. Johnny says, none. We just replaced the melted connectors and continue testing. And I'm the crazy one? So we have now documented proof with emails to, to PCI SIG that NVIDIA has had concerns and recreated and shown melted connectors. We now have Johnny freaking Guru himself that if you have followed power supplies for decades, he was like the go-to tester who's now an R&D uh, engineer for Corsair saying melted connectors. Now I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wish he'd gone into more detail. 
Okay, why did they melt? Where did they melt? Were you testing it at 450? Were you testing it at 600? Did it melt on the power supply side? Did it melt on the graphics card side? I'm, I, I, this is, his statement here is very left to interpretation. I'm gonna assume that they were testing the spec, which would be 600 watts. Because okay? I know for a fact in his like rant in the Discord that they were they did not have a card in hand. There was no cards in hand. At least that's one of the complaints he had was that he didn't have a card while he was having to develop a cable for it. So I'm gonna assume that maybe they were doing load testing, maybe at 450, maybe at 600, but with a with a load tester and that the melted connector happened at the GPU end, which is why there's no damage to the power supply, and I, they replaced the connector and moved on. So we now know that at least within the cable spec, and I'm gonna hope, because if they were if they were testing what happens beyond 600 watts, that wouldn't be a story. You move something beyond its spec, expect a failure. So that that's not a story, right? So I would assume that this is within spec. And now this, with the Reddit user, and again, if it shows that if you were to just like bend the cable once or twice, maybe too far or too tight, close to the connector, this can happen. Now, what, here's the funny part. Do you remember in that video I showed how tight you had to bend it and it started to pull the, the heat shrink out and stuff? I haven't used that connector. I've never used that connector. I've used the Corsair replacement cables that come for their power supply. They're type, they're type four connectors for any type four power supply that terminates to a 12 volt high power. I never used that connector. And now I'm wondering if I should because I bent the crap out of it. So I need to mark that one and keep it like, noted that, hey, this is the one I've bent the crap out of because it's really starting to look like the small delicate pins, which has been the concern from day one, is a part of the problem here. So it's interesting now that you have these big connectors that apparently were a problem. This is what Buildzoe goes into detail about. He's like, this, this wasn't a problem to have to make these connectors smaller because you could have still had, you could have still made a 10 pin or even a 12 pin. I would have, look, the eight pin plus four more, in fact, look at this right here. The back of the 1080 Ti Kingpin card, we have two eight pin connectors. Now imagine if that split in the middle wasn't there and it was just one connector that size. Wouldn't you still take that over the current split connectors we have today and over the 12, 12 volt power connector here that, you know, or the 12 pin power connector that exists now? Like if that were just a single plug and that were the new spec, wouldn't you take that? I would, because I can't remember the last time I saw one of these catch fire. I mean, it's happened, but usually it's a, because of a defect. And for anyone calling this particular 12 volt power connector fire issue a defect, I don't know yet because of the fact that we do know that he's bent that cable slightly and I still suspect it was bent this way initially, but everyone bends their cables because it's part of cable management. It sucks. And because of the height of the, the, the PCB now, if you want to run a side panel, you have to bend the cable if you're horizontal, period. Which now you, you shouldn't do, period. So don't run a side panel. This small thing now is gonna turn into a big problem. And I'm doubling down on this. When I said to that um, our concerns about this power plug, thank God this guy was there and caught it. Because it doesn't take much for plastic to catch fire. And anything that involves fire is a problem. And I am kinda calling it now, this is probably gonna turn into a much bigger issue involving consumer safety. Rather than anybody that was involved in this design taking any sort of responsibility and saying, hey, maybe we made a mistake with this design. Do you know why they can't do that? Because every freaking 40 series card has this plug. Every, every single 40 series card that's coming out that has been announced is using this plug. AMD is using this plug. Do you know who's not using this plug? Intel on their own card and they helped design the stupid thing. Yeah, but gee, it's not using 600 watts. Doesn't matter, it's about having uh, like continuity amongst connectors of the new spec. Intel helped design it, they're not using it. Maybe they're the smart ones. Maybe this was their plan all along. Make all the other guys burn up so they're the only card left on the market. I don't know. I could not care less about your opinion of me and whether or not this is fear mongering or whatnot. The motive behind these videos is 100% about consumer safety. Anything that catches fire or has the potential of catching fire or something that's as delicate as this connector is carrying, well, apparently, and I don't know how true this is. This is, this is something that someone said in the Reddit thread. I cannot vet this for, for accuracy, but I'm gonna put it out there anyway so somebody can look into this. Apparently, each pin is rated to 8.5 amps on the, on the power draw. And NVIDIA apparently has the 4090 spec at 9.5 amps per pin. So that's kind of a problem if it's true. But my point is this entire plug is nothing but a cluster. And it's gonna to continue to be a cluster. And I'm, I'm calling it now, this is gonna end up being the cycle from hell this time around, especially if AMD 
is anywhere near the power draw of a 4090. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to see what happens too as the power draw goes down, because I know the 4080 is probably gonna be a, anywhere between a 350 to 400 watt card. And AMD, for the love of God, I hope your efficiency is better than NVIDIA's because if you're at the spec of the limit per pin, and what I said is true about bending the cable and having it pull the pin back and you're not making full contact, because contact area is just as important as anything else when it comes to pin connection, may God help you all. If you're running a 40 series card, just have a fire extinguisher nearby. And maybe like a like a wire, an Office Max or an Office Depot, that's easy button to like a all stop on just, that just connected to your breaker. You hit that and it turns off the breaker. I, I don't know. 